Good Monday morning and welcome to another episode of Coding in AL and today we are going to look at how to run um, a containerized development environment in Docker. So please stay tuned. We looked at Docker in a previous video and we looked at the advantages of uh, using Docker. We looked at portability when you run docker or if it has been deployed in one system it will run in any other system that has docker it will give us performance because there is no uh, uh, better performance because there is no operating system unlike a virtual machine in a virtual machine you have an operating system first but docker there is no operating system you are virtualizing the operating system and it will give us agility once you have portability and performance you can easily um, deploy or make changes to the application and all um, containers run in isolation meaning one container won't affect the other if a, a specific container requires a specific uh, a certain version of the application to run it won't affect another container which requires another version of the application because they are, they are isolated and then scalability because you can create a container on demand so we had installed docker and once installed we had make sure when you go to the uh, icons of the system tray you make sure that you have this prompt switch to linux containers make sure that docker has been installed for windows and then once we have done we did that we also enabled the hyper v turn windows features on and off and make sure hyper v is enabled in your machine and then we set the execution policy to remote signed we can get the execution policy to know whichever execution policy you have once you have uh, you should get remote signed when you get the execution policy and then we had installed the module bc container helper force but just recapping for those who are just watching this video for the first time uh, you uh, uh, before they're watching the video without watching the other one just install run this command in your powershell script remember here i am using the powershell integrated script editor run as an administrator make sure that you first run this powershell the um, the windows powershell integrated script editor as an admin and then now you can be able to run these commands set the execution policy to remote signed and then install this module bc container helper force more details are in freddy's blog uh, i will link uh, it in the description we can write the bc container helper welcome text to confirm that we have installed uh, the bc container helper module successfully once we have done that this bc container helper enables us easily generate a script to create a container that fits whatever exactly what we need we want to create a container if you want maybe for version 17 or version 16 um, it enables us to do exactly that instead of going through the hassle of trying to cram the commands so how do you do that we run this command new bc container wizard this is the command that will give us that functionality the importance of using this uh, integrated script editor is that you get all this intelligence uh, while running so i'll enter there and then it will generate a prompt to enable us do exactly that so this is the uh, bc container helper as you can see we it is generating a prompt to the powershell uh, windows powershell as an administrator so the first prompt you have to accept the end user license agreement before you proceed so if you refuse then no option if you you can go and read the license under this link it has been provided there so you i say yes and then do you want to run it locally or on azure so you'll specify either locally or azure so that is the option 
okay and then the authentication there is this default user password authentication admin and uh, a predefined password or this random password that can be regenerated um but yeah we can I, spe I prefer to go with b for now but you can even specify your own password or you go with d if you want to use windows authentication and then we have now to specify our container name so that is our container name and then we need to specify the version what version of business central do you need if you are developing a tenant extension for business central um, software as a service tenant you need a business central sandbox environment but we just uh, for us we need the on-prem version let test business central on-prem and this is where you can specify whichever option you want you can go for the latest or a specific uh, like here specific business central on-prem build requires version number so if you specify like f it will prompt you to enter the version number the version number of the specific build that you want to install but for me here i just go i'll go with the latest on prem but uh, just uh, select the option that fits you here and then enter so latest business central on prem selected i believe the next option will be asking me about the version the language version that i want to use because um, from here you can be able to get that prompt so as it generates that prompt we can see here we have um, what version do you need uh, there is a blog by navision planet that i will link also in the description it will enable us to to get uh, the different versions that have been there the, the uh, platform okay the version numbers all the different version numbers that are available from version web re web 2020 release web 1 2021 release web 2 and here is my prompt i guess my internet is quite slow for the country and okay and all other countries that you want so now here we have the prompt to get the country i can go with default the default w1 and uh, but you can select the country of your choice these are the options that are there and then uh there is another question full test toolkit requires a license if you want uh, do you need to test the test toolkit to be installed the test toolkit is needed in order to develop and run tests in the container if you need it installed please select um either the full test toolkit or the test framework so i don't want anyone any to be installed for my case then if you're going to uh, perform base application development do you need to do a development yeah it's a it's a containers container for development <laughs> container is development environment and then um the uh when specify include a l uh, okay export a l base app when specifying include a l the default behavior is to export the L, L source code as a project for you to modify, compile, and publish. If you already have a source code repository, this is ob obviously not needed and can be avoided by specifying the option called do not export objects to text. Do you want to export the base app as an AL source code project? I think for me, I need to export it. Uh, the default is no. We can select yes. And then the final i think this should be the uh, no it's not the final if you want to the latest al from the marketplace so this is the vf vs xi file that will be generated if you if it's for if you have selected a version a specific version you should not select the latest AL extension you should use the AL extension for that particular version but for me i need the latest since i went with the latest version the license file since i said I needed the development environment so I will link the link I will have a link to my license file here so you can have a link to your license file and then finally I will go with the default database because if you can you can select uh, you can con you can either restore a backup or, um, inside the container or you can connect 
to an existing database if you have the server name maybe you don't want to install a new database again to an express version in the container you want the database of the container to be run in an existing server that you want you will select um to like option c connect to an existing database on your server but you should know that here it it only uses it only uses the sql server authentication it doesn't use the windows authentication so for me i'll go with the default and then i don't need multi-tenant uh -huh. so if you want a multi do you uh no i don't want a multi-tenant and finally i think i prefer using google's dns and then i don't need any ssl uh, uh, and then um, so we had also checked about the process isolation and hyper v isolation modes you can check that as well but uh, for me i will go with hyper v by default since this os um, has automatically detected that hyper v is what we'll need so i will leave it for default the maximum memory that the container will use will be uh, that 4gb and then the new tutorial i have called it uh, my spelling now this is the final step now you name your ps1 file that will generate your container so i will enter and then where is it enter the file where was it was where was i uh, okay i think i missed a step there's something that i did wrong but i won't repeat there's a prompt that oh it was i guess it was the image name that i named new tutorial which is okay which is okay or the container name whichever uh, I think um, and that's it. So this is the file which has this update host This will this will update your host with the uh, Container that will be made. So once you have generated this file Just click on this green button to run the script and then after you run the script Maybe you can be able to proceed from there When once you have reached at this step, please make sure you read this step uh, pause the video and complete the steps below and run the script and then we'll proceed from there okay welcome back we have for me i have i had already run the script for my site uh, i call it testing so but i had used a specific version of uh, as you can see when you specify a specific version it will give you this uh, version version 17 for me so once you have run the script you'll be able to see uh, the URL that has been created okay uh, this is the web client this is the development server these are the things that we need the BC setting uh, this is the IP of the container but it has already been set in the host uh, file this is the location of our vsxi uh, once we are when we are doing development i will go here in our visual studio code and i can how do we install from the vsxi i think you should click on extensions and then right click click on here and then install from vsxi paste this link where is it no it's not supposed to be there Mm -hmm. and then it has installed okay it has got it i don't know how but it has got it so you paste the link there and you'll be able to get the the package for your installed container so then we go to Control shift p uh, l go uh -huh. i will choose a different location for my project just call it test the folder it already exists l go e l new tooth. i believe this one is not there 
so i had selected the business central 2020 release wave 2 that is the one that i had selected in the version and uh, i'm running it locally in our container and then the server now we go back to our container once it has finished you'll have something like this you'll have the server um, this is the dev server copy that and then paste it here come on okay so many prompts so many prompts and then I think that's it the server instance will be BC and we'll use the user password to log on uh, the next thing is will be to download symbols so the user name is admin and the password I need to copy it this is the default password go back here and download symbols again with admin as username and password the default password when you generate a container and then symbols have been downloaded as you can see we are now ready to run our first containerized development environment app published hello world from container from docker container so i will run the application and we'll be able to see the hello world from by running our containerized development environment where is it come on where is it rushed to there it is oh again username admin then password okay so the the uh, the page that should open by default is hello world from the container and we have verified that we have um, done that successfully the page that should run by default as I was saying is the customer page and now we have tested our application with hello world and that is how easy it is Thank you, Fred, for creating for us that module that really enables us to um, get whatever we want in terms of running um, uh, the development environment on Docker. So I think that's it for this video. If you have any challenge, post it in the comments below and I will be able to check it. I will see you in the next video. Thank you. May God bless you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.